All right, here we are with the Massey Ferguson sickle bar. So we're getting ready to get out and cut the millet patch. This is a tool for those of you who have not been following along with hay cutting and other things we've done here. A couple years ago, I did kind of a walkthrough on this, but this is kind of an old school uh, hay cutting equipment. Generally, we uh, modern farming, you know, we'll use a, a hay bind. Um, these are great for entry level or small scale uh, hay and grass cutting because they are cheap and uh, they are <laughs> they're tricky to use but uh, they, uh, they do work pretty well once you get the hang of it. So this is by far the hardest piece of equipment that I have to hook up. It is just awkward. Uh, it is off uh, balance and off centered and uh, it's very goofy. You gotta get the bars in here, you know, on top of this lip, kind of right through here on the inside, lined right up with your pin and get it through there. It's uh, just trickier to hook up. A couple tricks that I have learned with this, there is a three points of, of hookup on this. Obviously, it's a, that's what all of our three point equipment is. It's got uh, a point here and a point over there and then the top uh, top link right here that uh, hooks the tractor. That's adjustable and that adjusts the, the tilt of the uh, implement. So that'll adjust the tilt of our, of our sickle bar here that we uh, are going to be used cutting. We don't want that, you know, pointed into the dirt. We want it pointed up a little bit. But one of the tricks that I've learned to uh, hook this up is just to get it real close. And then as you saw there in the video, I'll take my bucket and I'll nose it right down into the dirt. And then I can use the, the hydraulic levers to uh, move the tractor back and forth in tiny increments. I can lift everything up, up or down just a little bit, back or forward just a little bit in order to get it right in there and then pop it in and pop our pins in. And so that seems to be working really well. I use that trick for all the all of the implements that we hook up uh, here. And uh, this one especially is the, is the hardest. So, but I also have an extension you saw me put on there. This is just because the uh, shaft, uh, this shaft here was cut a little bit short um for a, a different person's tractor you know that i bought it from and i just needed a little extension there so instead of getting a whole new pto shaft i can just they sell these extensions they're not cheap i think that was like 30 or 40 bucks but that is a, a nice extension it's solid it's easy to put on and off and uh, just just gives me a few extra inches that i need to make this run smooth so a few months ago i did a uh, video on planting this millet patch so if you haven't seen that check it out it was a lot of fun <laughs> um I don't have all the fancy equipment to, to plant things. I don't have cultivators. I don't have, you know, broadcast spreader seeders and all that stuff for my tractor. And so uh, for smaller patches and things that we'll be doing here, and this is our little, what I call our production garden. So we grow, you know, pumpkin patch we did here. We're gonna do sunflowers at some point. Um, and then we planted millet out here this year. So, so the whole reason that we planted millet out here, and this is what we have behind me. I'll show you up close what it is. Uh, millet is kind of a green, but the reason we planted it out here is because it's been so wet this year, I didn't have a lot of time to get out here and plant sunflowers or pumpkins or something, a longer season crop earlier in the year. And I didn't plant this until the end of July. Actually, I can't remember, it might have been early August but uh, with that. But it's been about 60, 75 days, somewhere in there. And this stuff is, is grown and it's ready for, for harvest. So it's a little bit young still, but uh, definitely ready for what I'm going to use it for. So this is all the uh, millet patch. You can see a bunch of weeds and things growing in there too, but it didn't do too bad, actually, the millet. I planted it real thick. This was 150 pound sack in here. And this is probably, I don't know, maybe what, a quarter of an acre or something like that. So it was, uh, it was planted super heavy. Um, and I usually do that just to try to keep weeds down. But uh, you can see this is the, the grain head of the millet. These are the millet seeds. And I'll try to save some of these, see if I can replant uh, from this next year. But uh, the idea is that this is just such a fast growing crop that uh, we could put it in here. You can see it's a real short grain. Um, and it, like I said, I mean, it hasn't been that long. It's been two, maybe just over two months and it's ready to be, to be harvested. So what you would do if you were a real farmer is you would uh, come out here with a combine or something, I'm assuming this is how this is harvested. And you'd run the combine through here and it would strip all the, the seed heads off, strip all the grain off or cut it and take that into the combine and separate the seed out and then you'd end up with a bunch of grain. Uh, they do use millet in different feeds and things like that I've seen. Uh, it's a pretty cheap, cheap feed. It's, it's not as nutrient dense as like oats or, you know, or other things as my dog just wrecks everything. Since I don't have that kind of fancy equipment, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and come through the sickle bar. We'll cut this right down 
and we'll leave it out here. I've got at least a few days, it looks like, of decently dry weather. It may rain here or there, but hopefully we'll get it dried out enough where I can rake it into windrows and then bale it with the hay baler. So we'll treat it kind of like hay. Uh, and this will be great feed, especially for our pigs and our goats. They will love this. The goats will uh, just tear this, uh, tear this stuff up. They'll, they'll eat all the seed head off this. The pigs will also. They, they love this kind of stuff. And anything else that's in here, and we've got some weeds uh, and, and other things in here, a bunch of, I don't think that's, I don't even, I'm pretty sure that's a weed, that's not Timothy. So uh, anything else that's in here will just get uh, baled in to the, to the bales and, and the animals will eat that too. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. So next step is to put the dog away so I don't cut her legs off with a sickle bar. This is a super dangerous piece of equipment. <laughs> and, uh, I've had a couple close calls. Our dog got let out when I was out cutting and she ran out to the field and I didn't see. She jumped right over that sickle bar and it only takes a second to cut, cut legs off of that thing. So we put all the animals up and sometimes we let the neighbors know too, hey, we're cutting with the sickle bar. Make sure your dogs are, are, are tied up, locked up, whatever. But uh, uh, we'll get, get our dog locked up here and uh, we'll get out and get this cut. Well, it's all cut and it got pretty thin out there in the middle. Um, after I seeded this whole area, there was uh, about three weeks of just about no rain. And so uh, I had to come out here with sprinklers and stuff trying to get it to sprout because that's kind of a critical time. And uh, around the edges, it seemed to do pretty well. I mean, you can see all down here, it's pretty thick, but once you get out there, you can see uh, where the, the shoes from the uh, sickle bar were digging in also. Um, leaving a bunch of marks in here and it's just real sparse so the soil is just so soft and uh, it's also kind of moist the sickle bar's shoes were sinking in and catching dirt so it didn't really cut very well and we'll we'll see what happens we'll see how it dries out i've never I've never uh, baled millet before i don't know anyone who has um, <laughs> so we'll see what happens but i can say for sure that a lot of seed 
has fallen in and fallen off these these seed heads and i know if i let this stuff dry out too much that these are just all going to fall off and i want to try to keep as much of the seed attached to the stem as i can uh, to get it to the animals but it looks like i have have reseeded for next year you see all the seeds in there and so this will probably uh, come springtime uh, this will probably grow grow up uh, another full patch of millet which uh which I'm fine with actually. Maybe I'll cut an early crop of millet next year too and then plant sunflowers in here or I could use this as a cover crop since it grows real short and, uh, and plant sunflowers in here right through it. I also noticed that I had one problem with the sickle bar. The way that I hooked it up I wasn't paying attention and this bar right here needs to sit down on this uh, this spot right here and it was up on this ledge and you can see that it's not supposed to be sitting up here and so that one little difference that arm adjusts this which adjusts this which determines how the sickle bar lays down flat and so it was causing the inside shoe to uh, run real hard on the ground which in that soft dirt was causing you can see all the dirt all over this it was causing a lot of dirt to to pile up. I didn't even videotape while I was out there because I was goofing around with this thing so much I couldn't <laughs> couldn't hit the camera out. But mission accomplished for today. We will uh, let this sit out here for a couple days. I'm not going to rake it now. I will rake it one time probably in maybe one or two days. We'll kind of check the, the moisture out here in a few days and then we'll go from there. Just a quick update today on the millet patch. Uh, you'll have to stick around and see in the next video. We'll Will I actually be able to bale this stuff or, uh, um, or will this just be a complete waste? Either way, I think it's fine. The uh, seeds will end up in the field for next year and I can try again in, in a different, different approach. But at the very least, all the stems and all the, this basically will just like grass and uh, it'll be good nutrition for the animals uh, one way or another. So uh, the pigs and the goats are gonna love this stuff, I know it. And as the cold weather approaches, it was, it was 40 degrees last night. <laughs> it's getting, getting cool. And as that uh, cool weather comes in, we're going to start working in the greenhouse more. And uh, we're going to be, uh, I fired up the wood stove today, so we're going to be taking you in. We're going to be doing a lot of cooking with that this year. And uh, I'd love to take you guys along on how that Bun Baker XL works. Uh, what an amazing wood stove that thing is. And so uh, we'll be getting in and checking that stuff out here, uh, doing some videos on that. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Stay tuned for more on the uh, millet patch and greenhouse and gardening through the winter this year. It's going to be, we're going to try to do some crazy stuff this year. We'll see if we can, if we can make it happen or, uh, or maybe it's just a long shot. But uh, we're going to try to grow right through the winter and uh, see if we can produce food for ourselves in the middle of January. We'll, we'll see what happens. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.